Welcome class to mobile computing lesson one. The purpose of our lecture today is uh, to take you through introduction to mobile computing. And uh, we'll be going through first definition of terms because we want to appreciate what is mobile computing. And we'll start with the term computing. Computing is any activity requiring or benefiting or creating computers. It may include a development of both hardware and software. So in general, any activity that is carried out with the purpose of interacting with computers for the purpose of either using hardware or software, uh, uh, either to facilitate communication or to produce uh, a product at the end of the day, then that is what we refer to computing. What is mobility? As the term suggests, this refers to as users who have access to similar communication services at different places. We may have an example whereby if a user can be able to have access to their mobile device to log in to their email account and also at the same time log in to the same email uh, in a desktop to check or even to compose an email, then that is mobility. Another example we may say if someone is able to access to work on a document from the office uh, using their personal computers or the workstation and then assess the same document on transition headed home, either commuting through train or through a car or whatever means, uh, then at the same time using a mobile device and also be able to assess the same document at home using a laptop, then that is mobility. Uh, the one device portability refers to the movement of a communication device with or without a user. And that's why for mobility to be achieved, then the devices that are being used, be it a mobile phone, be it a laptop, a personal digital assistant, then the device must be portable so as to achieve mobility. With that in mind, now we need to combine the two terms, mobile computing. Now, this is the technology that allows the transmission of multimedia, media, that is the data, voice, and video via a computer or any other wireless enabled device without having to be connected to a uh, fixed uh, physical link. So basically, mobility comes into play uh, whereby without necessarily being fixed uh, to a physical link, is the aspect of mobility and computing in this aspect is now the ability to use the technology to allow transmission of uh, multimedia. media so mobility simply refers to as users who can have access to similar communication services at different uh, places as uh, explained earlier and then now the aspect of computing and mobility uh, forms the concept of mobile computing. For this to be, um, to come to realization and for this to be a reality, we have three key components in mobile computing, which forms the core pillars of uh, mobile computing. One of them is mobile communication. We have mobile hardware and mobile software. So we're going to discuss each on its own so that now we can be able to understand mobile computing in a better perspective. We start off with mobile communication. This refers to a form of communication which does not depend on a physical connection. That is a physical link uh, between the sender and the receiver uh, who essentially have to move from one physical location to another during communication. Uh, so the whole idea here, we are referring now to the infrastructure that is put in place uh, to ensure that there is seamless and reliable communication 
uh, is going on. Mobile hardware, uh, this includes various devices that are used to receive or send information so as to facilitate the service of mobility. And here we are talking of portable laptops, uh, smartphones, tablet PC, personal digital assistants, uh, and such. Uh, typically, when you talk about mobile hardware, we're also talking of the specific components of a mobile phone or a mobile a device, in this case referred to as mobile subscriber unit, MSU. And this may include even the display, uh, that is the LCD, the touch screen, the keypad, microphone, speakers, the SIM card, even the battery itself, the antenna, the memory unit, etc. So when we talk about the components of mobile hardware, and when we dis be discussing it in details, we'll be interested in both the infrastructure that is put in place to facilitate communication, as well as the mobile uh, the devices that are used to facilitate uh, the aspect of mobility in uh, computing. We have the mobile software. Mobile software mostly uh, is commonly referred to as an application or an app. Uh, these are type of application software designed to run on mobile device, such as a smartphone or tablet computer. Uh, so basically, a mobile software frequently is up to provide users with the similar services that are accessed on a personal computer. Examples of mobile softwares uh, that we have is Android system, we have Sibian operating system, uh, we have uh, uh, iOS, uh, which operates in um, uh, iPhones uh, and such. Uh, the list is limited, but basically when we talk about mobile software, we are talking of the brain uh, that facilitates or that is able to uh, facilitate hardware so that it can be able to be operational. The same way we have operating system, the same way we have applications in a personal computer that facilitate um, uh, services, that is uh, in terms of communication, in terms of chatting, in terms of calls, uh, and in, ter in terms of other internet uh, enabled services that rely on mobility. We have other supportive technologies uh, that we are also going to be interested in mobile computing. And one of them is wireless communication network. Uh, because for one phone to connect with another phone or for one device to connect with another, without using a physical link, we need the wireless communication. So we'll be discussing the multiple networks that we have that allow to, to have a coverage over the globe such that you can be connected in any part of the world. Uh, we're also going to be discussing uh, various worldwide uh, spectrum uh, auctions and deregulations, and also standard communication systems and air link interfaces. We also be interested in understanding portable information appliances. These are what we are calling the mobile devices. Uh, specifically laptops, notebooks, uh, the sub notebooks, and even the evolutions that we have had from gener that is first generation, second generation, uh, fourth and fifth, even to the sixth generation uh, mobile appliances. We're also going to be having interest to discuss the various uh, handheld computers, uh, that is uh, the portable computers and such and also the personal digital assistance and uh, smartphones. Because basically for the communication to be facilitated, mobile hardware comes into play. And this is where now we have the personal information appliances. Internet is also very key. And in this case, uh, we'll need to discuss the TCP IP protocol and also other application protocols that comes into play. Very key in our discussion, we need to come across ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous, that is web content. Basically, when we talk about internet, our interest will be to discuss the wireless application protocol, that is WAP, 
uh, because the mobile devices are not designed uh, and uh, uh, they are not basically designed uh, to, to operate in the internet. They are voice enabled. Uh, but for them to use services like voice over internet protocol, that is VoIP, uh, we need to have a clear understanding of how the wireless application protocol with the TCP IP suit comes into play to enable the mobile devices to assess internet services, which are basically designed for personal computers and such. We have different forms of computing and our interest here is also to understand other types of computing we have and how they interact. And uh, basically when we talk about computing, we talk of distributed uh, computing, whereby we have a client server architecture. A client is basically the user of the system. When you're making a call through a phone, you are a client. When you are logging into a system to access information, you are the client. When you're using a browser uh, to go through a website, you are a client. And the server is where now the database and the information is stored. And so this one is uh, broken down into different types of computing, whereby we have wireless computing, very key and we'll be discussing some components of the same. We have the stationary computing, which we call the nomadic computing, which is the uh, precursor of the mobile computing. And it is important to know where are we coming from uh, so that now we may now move on to ubiquitous computing, whereby when we talk about ubiquitous computing, we are talking of whereby the computer almost becomes obscured uh, by the technologies, the devices, and the technology that is being imposed on it. And then uh, we need now to come into pervasive computing and also invisible computing. So starting from wireless up to invisible computing, uh, it is interesting area, but in our study, we will major mainly on mobile computing uh, so that we can be able to understand this unit. But in the upcoming lectures and in coming uh, uh, lessons and tutorials that are going to be offered in this uh, platform, we'll also be interested to discuss wireless computing on its own merit, uh, up even to the invisible computing. But for now, we concentrate on the mobile computing. So when we uh, come to mobile computing, this is just a refresh on what we have just mentioned. Uh, we are talking of simply using small size uh, portable computers. And for your information, we talk about mobile subscriber unit, that is MSU. Uh, we may be talking of the handheld devices. We may also talk about other small wearable devices like the wrist uh, computers and such, as well as uh, uh, the, the, the smart uh, mobile phones. Uh, so basically in mobile computing, uh, they run on standalone application that is uh, all access remote applications. And this one now we discuss technologies. And so in our study, we'll be interested to discuss wireless networks um, and under wireless networks, we may be interested to discuss the infrared technology that is IR uh, the Bluetooth technology and the various types of the Bluetooth technologies we have. That is the PicoNet, the ScatterNet in detail so that we can understand when you say your mobile device is Bluetooth enabled, how does it operate? How does it uh, connect? When an institution decides to use ad hoc Bluetooth technology uh, to, to form connectivity, uh, we'll need to learn how is that done and what are its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, moving on to a larger setup, we need to discuss wide large area networks. Uh, cellular communication is very key in parts of our discussion uh, and also other various types of data networks uh, that we have uh, that support mobile computing. Uh, beyond that, uh, we need also to have a clear understanding of the nomadic and the mobile users. Uh, what are some of the users that we have, uh, like animals, how do they utilize mobile computing, agents, trains, cars, cell phones, and even when you talk about uh, animals, basically, uh, we also include in the human beings. How do we uh, benefit uh, from the component of mobile computing? 
in simple terms, any system needs to have the users and uh, any system also needs to have the operating system. And finally, we need also to have the company or the organization culture. When you are put together, then we form a whole system. And that's all about mobile computing as you're going to be discussing some of these components. Along the way, uh, I've mentioned uh, uh, three key, uh, or I've mentioned uh, some of the mobile, uh, uh, some of the computing uh, technologies, nomadic being one of them, the mobile and also the ubiquitous. The diagram below uh, elaborates in details. Um, I, I will discuss this further in the upcoming slide. But as you see it uh, displayed, when we talk about nomadic computing, we are talking the ability uh, to, to, to have ability to have connectivity, ability to communicate, but the devices that are used to do the, the computing are stationary. And that's why you see we have, uh, there's no network, uh, there's a fixed network and fixed wireless network. And that was the first phase of computing whereby it was nomadic computing. But now with the invention of uh, smartphones, then we have the mobile computing because we have portable devices. And so with the introduction of wireless networks, uh, then mobile computing becomes uh, a reality whereby you can connect from one network to another, and then you can be able to move from one uh, place to another and achieve the ability of mobile computing. When the two technologies uh, override uh, personal computers and also servers and such, then that one becomes ubiquitous uh, computing whereby uh, the whole aspect of personal computers uh, is overridden by the mobile computing devices. So in simple terms, nomadic computing is the use of mobile computing technologies to connect to global internet or use specific data resources from a stored location while moving around from one place to another. Sometimes you may find people referring to mod, uh, nomadic computing as mobile computing, which is true, but to some extent in mobile computing, we have portable devices, but in nomadic computing, we have what we call stationary devices that are facilitating uh, mobile communication. Ubiquitous computing is not a specific technology. But this is a scenario in which computers becomes more numerous and fed into the background, providing information to human users and embedding intelligence and computing capabilities in a seemingly everyday uh, objects. So when we come to the difference between nomadic and mobile uh, computing, we are simply saying uh, uh, mobile computing refers to the access in motion that is uh, ability to have portable devices and is therefore un unrestricted uh, to given geographical location. Uh, mobile may also, however, refer to access in a fixed location. And this is what now we call nomadic computing, whereby it is stationary. The equipment that is being used uh, is uh, stationary in nature. And that is now the difference between nomadic and mobile computing. At a glance, uh, we'll be discussing uh, the components that are displayed here in the coming lessons. That is the wireless infrastructure, whereby our interest is to move uh, from the level of uh, a room, whereby you can be able to use Bluetooth technology. And that is what we call a PicoCell network. And then uh, within a building uh, whereby we can be able to use a large area network. And then within an urban center, which we define out to a micro cell, which now we can be able to use a wide large area network. Then a macro cell within a uh, suburban area. And then globally, the use of satellite. So within our discussion, we'll be discussing satellite technologies, uh, different wide area networks, wide large area networks, a metropolitan area network and such when we are discussing the wireless uh, technology. 
and uh, in a nutshell to, to expand that when we come now to mobile computing our main interest uh, will be discussing the PSTN uh, that is the public switch telephone network uh, which our interest is to discuss what are the uh, uh, the basic components uh, that are used in terms of uh, uh, connectivity when you want to make a call uh, what are some of the components like within a region we'll be interested to discuss things like base stations um, uh, mobile switching centers and basically the whole uh, infrastructure of PSTN when you want to connect one country to another on one region to another what are some of the mobile devices that we use uh, so as to be able to facilitate the component of mobile computing? So in a nutshell, as uh, we wind up the lesson for today, uh, uh, we discussed and uh, mentioned some of the mobile devices like the iPhone, the, the iPad, the Android uh, phones that we have the portable projectors and basically these are some of the mobile uh, or portable devices that have the portability uh, capability and they are able now to support mobile computing or be able to support communication in motion. Technology is moving so fast and every time we are having new technologies uh, like projected keyboards whereby using razor lays you can be able to project the keyboard and be able to type uh, on a surface uh, that is on the air without having to have a, a, a touchable uh, keyboard. And then with time, as we move on, uh, mobile devices is an area of interest. It comes with its own limitation as we are going to be seeing. And uh, also due to continuous uh, improvement, uh, continuous research as we move on, uh, we are able to enhance the limitations which now provide an opportunity to move on. What are some of the mobile softwares uh, we have? Uh, some of the mobile softwares, which we have already mentioned, we have the Android operating system, we have the Sibian, we have the iOS. And uh, this is a battleground because every company wants to dominate. They want to be the largest uh, shareholders. But basically our interest is to understand are there are some of the advanced topics in mobile computing. How can we be able to develop some of these uh, uh, mobile apps? How can you be able to use some of the existing infrastructures to be able to program for mobile computing? It is worth noting at this point, it is not just about uh, coming up with apps and softwares. We need to understand the mobile computing infrastructure and then after that you can now be able to develop a software for the infrastructure after having understanding the hardware component and its limitation and also uh, some of the uh, opportunity areas that are being uh, provided mobile computing has been applied in different areas and one of them it has been applied heavily uh, in terms of uh, communication, whereby commuters, travelers, stock, uh, stock traders have been able to utilize the same heavy in terms of communication, exchange of information, collaborative work, uh, and also in the medical field in terms of uh, uh, keeping and tracking of uh, immunization programs, uh, medical records, archiving, and such. In law enforcement, mobile computing has also been used uh, heavily in terms of uh, even in courts, uh, that is uh, a storage of information, retrieval of information, uh, communication, uh, transfer, transfer of cases from one place to another. Uh, we have package delivery, uh, we have education, we have insurance, emergency tracking, intelligence, and military. So basically, in all these fields, mobile computing has come very in heavily in terms of one, uh, the small size of the mobile devices, the portability, the ability to work from office, work from home, uh, ability even in transport uh, to, to track uh, even a package that is being delivered in terms of even business. 
uh, we have M banking, uh, we have even in the Kenyan context, the MPSA context, whereby a lot of transactions go on and forth even as people do business. Even in health, we are talking of M health because we have a lot of apps uh, that can do diagnosis, that can help patients interact with their uh, with their doctors and such and even offer uh, prescription. So basically mobile computing is applied almost in all aspects of life and even in day-to-day -day, uh, activities. What are some of the advantages of mobile computing? One of them is what we call location flexibility and these are the number of users to work from anywhere as long as there's a connection established. Uh, these are scenarios whereby you can uh, start a task at office, um, continue with the task on the move as you do your communication using your mobile devices. And even, even at home, you can be able to continue with the task without having being fixed to a physical location. And that's what we call location flexibility. It's also save time because um, if you're able to exchange documents, share documents without necessarily having to meet uh, physically, uh, collaboratively a team can be able to work on the same document and be able to enhance productivity. Uh, there's also ease of research uh, because with the connectivity, uh, with the mobile devices, uh, which are environmentally friendly, which can be able to adapt to networks, uh, then you can be able to, to do collaborative research and such. Entertainment in terms of uh, having videos, um, even having online games and such, mobile computing devices have come into play. Uh, streamlining of business processes, whereby using mobile uh, components, all information system, the MIS management information system, all can be integrated in every person in any department can be able to collaborate with others. Customers can easily assess uh, business online. They can be able, to be able to interact, get feedback online. Um, nowadays, we can have even you not even going to the bank to open even a bank account using your phone. You can be able to do the same, assess statements, do transactions, pay your customers, uh, be able to interact, uh, make purchases, make orders then track even the whole aspect of delivery and the shipment uh, reaches you at your convenience. And that's what we are calling streamlining of business processes. Every technology comes with limitations uh, and every advantages also comes along with a share of uh, disadvantages. It is worth noting when we discuss the limitations of mobile environment or mobile computing, we are also exploring the possible um, uh, the possible areas of research and also available opportunities. Uh, so the limitations also come in a package of opportunities that are available. We have different types of uh, limitation, but in summary, uh, we have limitations of wireless networks. Remember we said mobile computing, the mobile devices rely on wireless network because they are not, uh, uh, fixed to a location network. Uh, here we are talking of heterogeneity of fragmented networks. Networks may be different. Uh, frequent disconnections now and then occasioned by different reasons as to why we may have disconnections. We have limited communication bandwidth. Uh, mobile devices are not like personal computers due to the limited uh, frequencies and even low processing power. Uh, then we are talking also of low bandwidth in terms of communication. We have also limitations that are imposed by mobility, which we'll discuss in details, and then limitations of mobile computer or the mobile subscriber devices, which we will be referring as mobile subscriber units, that is the MSU. So when you talk about frequent disconnections, this one may be occasioned by different reasons. For example, we may have drained battery disconnection because the battery has gone off. Uh, we may also have a battery recharge downtime. 
At times it may also be voluntary discussion. You're trying to reach out someone, they have already disconnected or switched off um, their devices, maybe overnight and such. You may also have theft and damage because the moment the device is stolen or it's destroyed, then uh, uh, there is no communication going on. We also have the room of disconnection. When someone is out of rage or is in another country, uh, then there's disconnections uh, because of the different PSTN or the public switch telephone networks we have in different areas. When you talk about limited communication bandwidth, uh, we are talking of, uh, uh, in terms of limited communication, uh, which comes uh, sometimes occasioned by higher transmission bit error rates, which may be occasioned. Uh, sometimes by the strength of the base stations and such, which you're going to be discussing the different transceivers that we have in terms of communication. You also have uncontrolled cell population that is difficulty to ensure quality of service and availability issues that is admission control. Uh, this one will be much more clear when you're going to be discussing the cell as a unit whereby uh, a base station operates and how um, uh, the quality of service can be ensured and uh, how a small region and a larger region are administered and how many number of base stations can serve within uh, a certain geographical location which is referred to a cell uh, which you're going to be discussing on its own. So basically uh, this is what we call limited communication bandwidth uh, and in details, we are going to be seeing it even as we discuss the different uh, uh, frequency spectrums and the limited bandwidth that we have and how the same can be overcome using what we call frequency reuse and such. We also have the limitations of the mobile computer. Uh, in this case, we are talking of a mobile subscribed by unit, which can also be a smartphone. And uh, basically here we are talking of um, one, the devices are subject to theft and destruction, a short battery life, approximately most smart devices go for five hours when they're on heavy use, eight hours if they're not on heavy use. And mostly they use the Leon battery, which comes also with its own limitation. We have um, high unavailability, when normally powered off, uh, sometimes to conserve the battery, and also limited capability. In terms of display, uh, in terms of memory, input devices, and disk space, a mobile phone compared to a personal computer, a personal computer has a larger display in terms of screen, uh, 17 inches, 13 inches, and upward. But in most devices, computer, um, mobile devices, you find they come with very limited uh, display. In terms of memory, uh, much more has been done whereby we have phones storing as much as 64 GB um, and also uh, even going beyond that. But in terms of memory, you can also not compare uh, or it's incomparable uh, in terms of uh, PCs having high storage spaces as much as terabytes upward. Input devices, you find most uh, mobile phone devices, their input is either audio, keyboard, and such. Uh, but when you talk about PCs, they have more uh, input devices uh, and also output devices. Uh, disk space is also an issue. And much more and beyond that, we have the general architecture of the health devices, communicators, laptops, and other devices. Uh, it also comes uh, with its own uh, limitation. We have uh, limitations also imposed by mobility. Uh, sometimes this may be occasioned by lack of mobility awareness by the application, or also the lack of mobility awareness by the system. What we mean by lack of uh, mobility awareness by the application, uh, this is the software. Uh, and when we talk about softwares, sometimes when the, the software is being designed, you may find uh, one of the, some of them lack suitable API, that is the application program interface, uh, so as to enable the mobile devices to interconnect with the internet 
and also to interconnect with other devices. And that one becomes a major a limitation. When we mention lack of mobility awareness by the system, sometimes this is occasioned by the network whereby the existing transport protocols are in, inefficient to use across a different uh, mix of fixed wireless networks. And this is one of the major limitations when you are discussing uh, IP, that is internet protocol, and how it comes into play in the, in, uh, uh, the mobile devices. And, and this one will understand best when you're discussing the different generations we have that's from first generation to the uh, fourth generation and by extension to the fifth and sixth generation types of mobile devices. Session and presentation in terms of um, uh, system awareness uh, is you may find inappropriate for the wireless environment and also for mobility. Uh, this is when you're talking about the OSI model, the seven layers, so within the session and also the presentation layer. Uh, you find because of the limitation of the hardware devices in terms of display and in terms of programming, uh, you find there is lack of mobility awareness by the system. Operating system is also another key area. Uh, that is lack of environmental related conditions and signals. As much as mobile devices are adaptable to environment as one of the key advantages of location flexibility, uh, there are some limitations that may be occasioned. You find like there is now a roaming of disconnection because one PSTN is not interfacing with another because of the different operating systems that are not portable or closed regions. Then we have the client server um, architecture, whereby mostly it's inappropriate and it's inefficient. And at this point, uh, it comes as an advantage because out of research, the wireless application protocol has come into play and through its invention, mobile devices are able now to interface in the client server architecture. And that's why in my start of limitation, uh, I stated very clearly that limitations uh, can also come in as a possible opportunities. And out of this, we'll be discussing those opportunities as we move on. We have come to the end of the first lesson, which was basically an introduction to mobile computing in general. Uh, but in the coming lessons, we'll be very much interested to discuss uh, some of the major components that we have. Uh, that is in terms of cellular network, the GSM architecture, the GPRS, and all of these, how they support uh, communication and even of interest to know what is the process of making a call establishment. What process does it go when you press the dial button to make a call? As part of assignment, just to test the understanding. Uh, so based on the current ongoing research, recommend specific solutions to these mobile computing limitations. That is battery line. Uh, what has been done in terms of research currently to improve that because we say where there is a limitation, there is an opportunity. Uh, the small graphical interface, the small LCDs in the phones, what has been done uh, uh, currently to overcome this challenge? Load bandwidth, what is being done in terms of research and security threats? So do a study, lead them going research, and then you can be able to provide a specific uh, recommendation under each. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We'll be looking forward to meet you uh, in the next uh, lesson.